It seems like the United States has pissed off the sleeping bear, Mother Russia, Putin himself, and now Putin's making a lot of geopolitical decisions to destroy the U.S. economy, just like the U.S. and Saudi Arabia are destroying the Russian economy. But in this video, we're going to go through over the latest details of what's happening geopolitically and, most importantly, why this is happening. Now, in the news, we see Putin calling for a currency union with ex-Soviet allies. Putin's calling for a Eurasian currency union with Belarus and Kazakhstan. This deal will most likely go down, and many people are saying it. It's to destroy the U.S. dollar. Many experts say that the U.S. dollar is everywhere today, so I may assume that it goes about the effort to remove American dollars from the intermediate circuit and conduct settlements in national currencies. That's probably how it will happen. That's what Putin is maneuvering around to get rid of the U.S. dollar trade, the U.S. dollar kind of hegemony all around the world that's taking place right now and it's being threatened by someone we pissed off with the situation in Ukraine. We see Putin also making a lot of deals. This is an article from December 2014, just a few weeks ago, how ditching the U.S. dollar, China and Russia launching financial tools and local currencies. We also know China and Russia just made a huge oil deal within the region that will uh, sell in rubles and gold and local currencies instead of the U.S. dollar. So this global trade of U.S. Uh, oil is ending, especially with China and Russia coming into the play, working together closely on this big trade deal that they have just made. Now, President Putin, in many contexts, has made many speeches before saying that his economy is vulnerable because of the U.S. dollar control, that he needs to act in a certain way to get rid of the U.S. petrodollar, the U.S. hegemony that's happening, and that's exactly what he's doing. Putin is smart. He knows uh, the history of American foreign policy, which we'll get into a while. Even international experts say that the tensions between Iran have to deal with the petrodollar, have to deal with Iran making a lot of allies with China, with Russia, and we see this geopolitically. When you look at the bigger geopolitical picture and you look at U.S. foreign policy, you see how strongly the U.S. tries to control the international trade of oil and dollars. We look at Iraq. On September 24th, 2000, Saddam Hussein decided to stop selling oil in U.S. dollars and to start selling oil in euros. And because of that, he was invaded because he had WMDs. If you believe that, oh my, God, don't even get me started. Now, we have Libya, which in 2009 was proposing the African Union, which would bring together Middle Eastern and African countries to trade locally in a gold denomination. And this, of course, would make sure that the U.S. dollar is not traded in gold. NATO bombed the crap out of the remaining regime, now made it a hotbed for international terrorists and ISIS, and now Gaddafi and his plan for a gold-traded oil kind of union within Africa has been destroyed. We have Syria in 2008 deciding to do similar things, not to trade in U.S. dollars when it comes to oil, also screwing over Saudi Arabia in a pipeline deal that was supposed to send Saudi oil to Europe and screw over Russia. So Syria decided to stay with Russia decided to sell their oil not in U.S. dollars, and then they were heavily infiltrated by extreme terrorists, which have links and have been backed and have been supported with food, weapons, high military technology by the United States. All this weaponry, all this money from the U.S. came in here. They destabilized Syria. Now these ISIS terrorists control the oil fields and are selling it to Turkey. Turkey, our ally, is buying oil from ISIS. And yet there's not a peep for, of, of any sanctions, of any wrongdoing by Turkey, even though they're financing pretty much the rise of Islamic terrorism. We see, we see Iran in 2009 calling for and seeking the Iranian oil exchange, which would also screw over the U.S. dollar trade. And now Iran has many sanctions put against it. Russia has a lot of sanctions put against it. They're also making a lot of inroads to sell oil in rubles and gold. That's why we see China and Russia, Russia buying up gold in huge amounts because they're slowly preparing to end the U.S. hegemony, the U.S. petrodollar. Two-thirds of the world's reserve currencies are based on the dollar, and the United States needs the currency of the U.S. dollar to keep exchanging, needs to keep it in this flow with this threat of Russia. Now, just threatening all of this with China, with Iran, with Venezuela, with Iraq and Libya and Syria, who were stopped from doing that with our aggressive foreign policy, um, 
they need to because if the world's oil exchange and if a lot of important goods and services are not traded in U.S. dollars, the U.S. dollar is meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. And everyone in the world are going to send back their U.S. dollars to the United States, bringing on hyperinflation. The United States and the Federal Reserve won't be able to print any more money. We will have all this money coming back at us saying we don't need the dollar. We don't need to use your money system. We don't need to keep this exchange going. Therefore, the dollar will drop if people stop using it. And that's why you see Putin geopolitically calling for these unions, working closely with China, because this will screw over the United States and our economy. And it's important to know why is Putin doing this? Well, the United States has not only been aggressive with its allies, including Syria and Iran, but we see the U.S. not only implement sanctions on all these countries trying to hurt them and destabilize them. These sanctions are only possible because of the U.S. dollar hegemony. If the dollar wasn't as strong as it was, if it wasn't trading all over the world, the U.S. would not have as much influence to set up international sanctions with all these countries. And because of the strong U.S. dollar, that's the only political might that we have with our military. The U.S. made secret deals with Saudi Arabia in September of 2014 to overproduce oil. And because of this overproduction, the price of oil goes down. It leaves Russia screwed economically because 50% of Russia's economy is based on oil exports. If the price of oil goes down, they can't sell it at a profit. Their economy is going to go down. With the sanctions, their economy has been screwed. Their people, their, the value of their money has been taken away from them by U.S. foreign policy. Putin knows this. Putin knows the deep geopolitical aspects of why really these invasions happen of all these Middle Eastern countries. And he's saying, you know what? We're going to answer back. We're going to fire back as much as we can. And that's what's really happening geopolitically. That's not explained to you in the U.S. mainstream media. Uh, now, of course, there's even latest economic news saying that Russia is rebounding despite these sanctions. A lot of European countries are saying that we cannot continue these sanctions. We want this trade to continue with Russia. And all this kind of U.S. geopolitical might is kind of coming to a forefront. The Russians have been extremely aggressive and they even warned um, Denmark recently. Denmark was thinking about joining the NATO missile defense shield and then a Russian ambassador said that they could be legitimate targets for nuclear attacks by Russia. Russia is answering back not only economically but also geopolitically with a lot of different war games alongside of Europe. NATO of course is not backing down in any way shape or form and they're balking at these threats and they're saying you know what we're gonna answer with our own military drills and exercises. Russia you cannot have these drills you're aggressing on us so we're gonna aggress towards you even more and you could see the recent military drills done by NATO surrounding Russia and of course the major message that NATO is selling is that you could have you know we could have all these war games but you can't and of course they're doing it near the Russian border trying to aggress the other side uh, militarily and of course NATO just confirmed that we must fight Russia in an information war and that's what we're seeing in the mainstream media we're seeing a New York Times article we're seeing a lot of mainstream media reports vilifying right-wingers in Russia and people who are homophobic and hate gay people in Russia. We're seeing an onslaught of that in the mainstream media with the recent New York Times articles um, because the U.S. mainstream media is controlled by uh, the U.S. government. The U.S. government not only heavily infiltrates U.S. mainstream media, but they also do the work for them as we've seen exposed by other journalists how the US government just gives them the sources, gives them the news, sometimes even writes articles for them. There's Operation Mockingbird where the CIA controls the United States mainstream media and infiltrates them and pretty much does their bidding for them. And that's why we don't see news about the human rights violations in Saudi Arabia with women who want to drive, women and people who are gay who are being tortured, murdered, beheaded, and just killed. In Saudi Arabia. Of course, you don't hear this international human rights backlash in the United States against a just massive human rights violator, Saudi Arabia. We hear what's happening in Russia. And of course, Russia is not a perfect country in any way, shape, or form. But if you could if you look at human rights violations worldwide, um, I think there's a lot of other countries that are bigger proponents of violating people's human rights, not just Russia. Of course, Russia still is not perfect in any way, shape, or form. They have their own problems they're dealing with. I'm just explaining why we're seeing a huge onslaught in the United States against Russia geopolitically, so the people hate Russia. 
But what we're seeing is just Russia economically answering back against the United States attack. And that's what's happening in the news. And that's why you're not hearing any of this in the mainstream American media. You're hearing this with independent media giving you the sources, giving you the facts. Check out the description below. Fact check everything I say. Prove to me that I am wrong in this kind of analysis that I have just given you. Now, we are under massive attack by Google, by AdSense, by YouTube, and our numbers and our... Um, revenue streams have been hurt tremendously I will make a video about this soon but just know we are under attack in the information war with people trying to prevent this message from coming across with people hurting this operation financially to make sure I will not continue to do this so like this video share this video with your friend show people that they cannot stop independent real news and information it's up to you it's nobody else Share this video. Thank you again so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to youtube.com forward slash we are change.